and we just started a 14-team league with Leonard Fournette, Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, and Gabriel Davis. That's some dogs. We have some dogs. We have definitely some grown ass men. This is probably uh, through four rounds. We probably have the most weight on our team combined. Let's go. Yeah, I think it's a great brand play. <laughs> <laughs>Today, I'm just like all of you. I'm drafting my season-long team in the heart of preseason chaos. Um, oh, I say fire it. This is good content. This is what the Underdog Fantasy subscribers are here for, is for this. Spoiler alert, though. Our team is stacked. But there are a few differences with this league. One, it's a 14-team, half-point PPR league. Second, we have actual NFL players in this league. The first is... Your favorite running back of the Green Bay Packers, A.J. Dillon, and also rookie running back for the Atlanta Falcons in Tyler Algier. And third, this league is full, full of industry titans. I'm talking about J.J. Zacharyson, Scott Fish, Ray GQ, the entire BDGE crew, community, Matt Kelly, Jack Settleman, Peter Overzet, it's stacked. Um, but Hayden and I, because of that, thought that it would be worthwhile to all of you to get a behind the scenes look of how we put together this really, really good team out of the 107 spot. Um, really the number one tool that we used was looking at underdogs ADP and how we could configure that to take advantage of a typical season long player list, whatever platform you use out there. So we condensed this one and a half hour long draft into this episode. Enjoy. AJ Dillon won this league last year? He did. By a country mile, apparently. Wow. By a country I mile, AJ Dillon won. I believe he also had the 101 last year and took Christian McCaffrey and still won the league. So I don't know. Damn. We, we weren't a part of this last year. I highly doubt we would allow that to happen on our watch. He must have had Leonard Fournette and James Conner and, and maybe himself. himself. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we are honestly in the hell spot. The 107 is just about worst case scenario. I think in a lot of the leagues that we go through on employee drafts and underdog, go play basketball, God's game. We want one of those top four selections. We're not going to get that. So if we look at their ADP, and this is going to be an interesting conversation throughout this entire time, sleepers ADP versus ours. It says on the line, Justin Jefferson is right there. Cooper Cup is right there. Jamar Chase is right past it. I would love any of those three names, along with maybe a Dalvin Cook or Austin Eckler dynamic and conversation you and I can have. Yeah, our ADP is way different. Derrick Henry, I, I'm looking at third overall. Derrick Henry goes like ninth or 10th overall uh, on underdog. So yeah, I'm very curious to see how this shakes out. Is this half PPR, full PPR? Half sorry, point PPR. Yep. And it's two okay. running backs, three wide receivers. One flex, one quarterback, one tight end, 16 rounds. Plus, you have a kicker and a defense. Uh, we've already decided we're not taking either of those. And the draft is off. Peter Overzet, 101. Chris McCaffrey, thumb to his nose. You know he didn't want to do that. You know he wanted like the three or four spot to take one of those wide receivers. And I'd expect maybe Jack takes uh, Justin Jefferson here. Maybe. No. Austin Eckler. Oh, Austin Eckler. Wow. This is probably a marketing deal for for, <laughs> for Jack and Eckler. I, we know Eckler's been in, in the fantasy space. I think this is a marketing move. Okay, so Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup off the board, Derrick Henry. And so this brings us to the dilemma. Is it Dalvin Cook or is it Jamar Chase, Hayden? I say we go Jamar Chase. I've got a feeling that one of these running backs that we like, we're like I'm talking Leonard Fournette, James yep. Conner. Yep. I think you're going to be available to us late in the second round. Um, and we know the wide receiver is going to drop, fly off the board. In industry drafts, that's the one thing I've known, is the wide receivers are coming off the board early yep. and fast. And we've had Rich Rebar on the show. You've talked about this as well. If you don't get, I don't know, one of those top four wide receivers, maybe even Devontae Adams' top five wide receivers, you can poke holes in even the ones that go in round two. And oh, we yeah. just got one of the top three, and I feel much better about the running backs that we're going to get along the way to. There's going to be one of those top 15 running backs available yep. to me because no one drafts James Conner. He still goes so late. That's the one player I just like. What's the negative case? It's just <laughs> that he's going to get injured. Is that what it is? We're probably going to have that different. I, we're probably going to have new people checking out this show than we have in the past. It feels like we've made the James Conner 
proclamation every single show, but I'm with you. People, I think in their minds, believe that it's going to be a split backfield like it was last year in Arizona where someone's going to get the Chase Edmonds role and buy their wallets by paying James Conner and not signing anyone else or drafting anyone else. They are telling you that James Conner is going to work between the 20s and most importantly still have a dominant workload inside of the 20. I mean, I don't know what there isn't to love other than people trying to predict an injury. Yeah, and if you have a, a injury prediction history and you're rock solid on it, please <laughs> let me know. I'd love to know this. This would be the skeleton key to fantasy football. We would like to hire you if you're batting 100. So just to wrap it up after us, Stefan Diggs goes to Matt Kelly, Najee Harris to Ray GQ, Devontae Adams to Cooter Doodle, Matthew Betts, who I believe is representing the fantasy footballers, gets Dalvin Cook at the 111. Very nice. DeAndre Swift goes to everyone's favorite, Scott Fish. Alvin Kamara goes in round one here to BDGE. Interesting, Hayden, just a few weeks ago, Alvin Kamara was a third round selection on underdog. I think the odds were, I don't know, minus 700 that both AJ Dillon and Tyler Algier selected running backs in round one. And <laughs> Joe Mixon, when you talk to coaches and to players, oh is like a consensus, like top five, just pure talent. Oh, yeah. Fantasy Twitter has like never been a Joe Mixon type, really, um, which has been strange to me. Um, but I, I think that I've been drafting Joe Mixon at the round one, two Ooh. turn. I know everyone's saying that Joe Mixon's not going to play any passing downs. Like, what if he does? Yep. You know, like it, it, if he doesn't, then he's going to be on the RB one, two border where you're drafting him. And if he does, all of a sudden now you have like an Austin Eckler type of stat line. So I'm in. And then we go to Tyreek Hill. I think uh, wow. Tyler Argeo might have a little crush on Tyreek Hill, the player. Saquon Barkley, who arguably should be a top 12 selection, getting it with the 2-2 is absolutely beautiful from Ercolano, Animal, and uh, and company. Love that one. DeAndre Swift to Scott Fish. If, if maybe one of the portions of today's show is our least favorite pick in every single round, DeAndre Swift in round one would be that for me, Hayden. Yeah, um, I'll give my case. You don't have to fall under the like on the sword for me. No, I, I am with you. I am with you. But I, make I'm, your case. I'm a little nervous of his pure rushing ability for a team that should be and wants to be in more neutral and positive game scripts this season. He was incredible as a receiving back last year. And that helps when you're attached to Jared Goff, who loves to check down the football. Um, but we also think the lines are going to be better this year. Their offensive line is fantastic. And Jamal Williams just simply isn't going away. And so I don't think it's going to come close to a 70% workload for, for DeAndre Swift. And he's kind of being drafted among these feature backs. And Jamal Williams, one of my favorite players in the league, you know, like there's a couple of players where I'm just like, yeah, that's my guy. And Jamal Williams, certainly my guy, especially at cost. Like this isn't even just that he's, he's the greatest uh, personality uh, on the Lions, it's also that he's just slightly undervalued. Okay, we're almost on the clock. We have Nick Chubb on the board and Leonard Fournette. If Leonard Fournette makes it to us, that would be ideal in my book. Yeah, I would go Leonard Fournette. The other perfect. Yeah, I would go Fournette. I also think that Mark Andrews is for debate here, but let's go Leonard Fournette. We both like Lenny. Oh yeah. And a 14 team, I do think have you have to take a running back, at least how we draft in the first two rounds with someone like Leonard Fournette sitting there. Because after that, there's no lock for us to get James Conner in round three. And that's probably the last one of this grouping that we would feel incredible about. Heck, if we get James Conner in 307, I would love that too. But this opens that up for us to not have to reach on running backs later on. Fantastic start for us. I mean, we, you and I would take Leonard Fournette ahead of a couple of the other running back names that have already been off the board. Yeah, I think I have him like ranked like 15th overall or something like that. Uh, just going back to the Mark Andrews point, uh, one of the differences between redraft and best ball to me is the tight end position. And in redraft, I think it's more it's better to have one of these stud tight ends versus in best ball because in best ball, you can play that ping pong tight end week or touchdown weeks. Uh, later on, that's why I've been doing so many three, like tight end two teams. Yeah. Um, but in this league, when you are just setting your lineups and you don't know who's scoring the touchdown that week, it is nice to have someone like Mark Andrews who you can project for six to eight to 10, sometimes even 12 targets. And a lot of the names that I'm talking about, like David Njoku and Gerald Everett, 
they're just probably not going to get that same volume. So I think in your redraft league, I'm leaning more towards Mark Andrews than I would be uh, in best ball. I think Jack's setting up a charger stack here with uh, Keenan Allen at this spot. Also, A.J. Brown, Mark Andrews, J.J. Zacharyson, sir, double wide receiver with Cooper Cup and Mike Evans. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. You and I are very much into early quarterbacks in best ball. What about early quarterbacks in redraft? Well, in industry drafts, early quarterbacks means like round eight because nobody true. wants to draft them. I still think they all just project very well. Yeah. You know, like just Patrick Mahomes just projects so much better than Mac Jones, <laughs> you know, and I love Mac Jones. So uh, I'm definitely open to the being a part of the quarterback run, but you don't have to be the first one to, you don't have to draft Josh Allen necessarily. And right. I'm still ah. looking to stack, you know, like to me on this team, it's more like, let's just time it when Joe Burrow is going to be available, yeah. you know? Okay, there are a couple avenues for us here. Mike Williams is much lower on this ADP, and he would have already been off the board by, what, pick 37? That's on the clock right now. Yep. Um, Michael Pittman just went. Cortland Sutton is a name that's intriguing to both of us. That's kind of at the top of that tier. I'm open to your input. To me, this is Mike Williams or Cortland Sutton. I don't agree with any of these ADPs, really. Um, I would go Mike Williams personally. Maybe we can get Justin Herbert in the fourth round. I know he goes the fourth round in uh, underdog, so I would right. rather go Mike Williams. Okay, I'm with you there because also we will be picking ahead of Jack, who's already stacked Austin Eckler and Keenan Allen. So maybe we can snipe him with the Justin Herbert fourth round selection. Also, I, I am curious. A AJ Dillon did go Debo Samuel. I, I wonder if he if he knows him as a running back. <laughs> If he knows. The only thing with Mike Williams, though, is we basically have to then take Justin Herbert in round four, and that might be the first quarterback off the board. I'm not sure if we have to. Do you okay. think we have to? Well, if yeah. we don't, then we won't get him, is what I'm saying. Yeah, it, but I think I think we leave ourselves an out to just getting Joe Burrow a little bit later. Wow, True. Cam Akers. <laughs> oh, baby. Okay, so it's between Mike Williams and Cortland Sutton here. Mike Williams Mike is the pick. Big Mike. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. I, well, I will say this is why we always talk about underdog ADP. Since yep. it refreshes every 48 hours, it's always up to date, you know? So I think using underdog's ADP in particular to beat Yahoo's rankings, to beat ESPN's rankings, when you are doing your home leagues, and that's the advantage of best ball in general, is if you're playing on underdog since, I don't know, last February, for this upcoming season, you have a real good feel of where these players should be going um, so I think Mike Williams in the middle of round three is a great pick. You think Ray showed up and was like, I'm just going to make alpha moves and start off with three running backs. I, I think great. he had a predetermined strategy in this one. <laughs> um, meanwhile, JJ started off with three wide receivers. It's the yin and the yang of this draft room. I'm with you. Like one of the best columns that was previously written at Roto world every single year was just the mispriced and the miss ranks of ADP across the industry. Because at least at NBC, we would always do our drafts on Yahoo. And you could just say, oh, man, when we get to round seven, this guy would go in round five on underdog. And I know I can get him two or three rounds later. And you can wait the extra 12, the extra 24 picks. Um, and we're going to see a lot, a lot more of that as we go along. And at some point, we can even start searching through that and maybe star some of the names that we think are wildly different than, uh, than underdog ADP. Yeah, totally. You're just like looking at this. Antonio Gibson's 45th in rankings here. He's probably going to settle in in the 90s on underdog. So that's like a very clear fadeaway. And we'll see uh, AJ Dillon. We're getting into AJ Dillon territory. I wonder if he starts pulling the, the trigger in round four or, oh, or so? if Tyler, Tyler Algier is like a little tip of the cap uh, respect and he goes him a little early. Who knows? <laughs> so all three quarterbacks are quote unquote at the top of the board. Um, someone again is going to have to fall on the sword and be the first one in an industry draft full of Titans to make that first jump. It's always tough. It's always weird being that first one. I'm happy to do it this next time though, if Josh Allen's there, even though we don't have a stack, we can always get Gabe Davis on the return or Dawson Knox yeah. later on. Yeah. And in these industry drafts, Gabe Davis tends to fly Go a bit so, earlier. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, right after our Mike Williams selection, Matt Kelly, the podfather, went Allen Robinson, which if you want to rank him at the top of that 
danger zone where Cortland Sutton goes, where Deontay, where Terry McLaurin goes, I'm all for it. And obviously Matt Kelly does. Yeah, I, I I'm not. I guess I just don't understand why Cortland Sutton goes after Deontay Johnson. There's, I would argue, less target competition for Cortland Sutton, and better quarterback he's, a, he's attached to. Better quarterback. So I don't know. I can't. Much of I believe it. Um, also, Cortland Sutton doesn't have to go against you know George Pickens, maybe the best wide receiver I've ever seen. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll see. Go and watch again. It has the thumbs up and the thumbs down on it for moving up and moving down players really the 10 rankings changes that we made after preseason week one if you're enjoying this it's ah oh, there it goes of course Tyler Algier is the one to take the first quarterback he starts off with Joe Mixon Tyreek Hill David Montgomery and then Josh Allen wouldn't you have just loved it if he went Double Gabe Davis Josh Allen you know like if he's just would, like really it. setting it up <laughs> if he just setting everything up I would love that Okay, so let's uh, let's start setting this up with our next selection. We're a handful of picks away. Again, we're at the 4-8. It's at the 4-2 at the moment. Um, we could get one of these tight ends in George Kittle and Darren Waller, or you have these wide receivers like Jalen Waddell, DK Metcalf. It's almost lining up for me a quarterback selection here based on how the board is falling, but what, what do you think? It would be Herbert if he's available, and then I would like to see the wide receivers uh, pulled up by themselves. I don't think we need a running back. Um, this is kind of the running back dead zone. I'm interested in, I guess, Jalen Waddle and DK Metcalf. Marquise Brown goes in this range on underdog fantasy versus on sleeper. Um, those would be kind of the names I'm looking at in particular. Uh, we like some of these running backs a little bit later on that other people do not. Elijah Mitchell, Clyde edwards Lair, And I bet we'd be able to get one of those on the return. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. And I think Elijah Mitchell is battling an injury right now. So his his ADP is a little bit wonky. Um, I love Clyde edwards Lair, And nobody seems to like him still. So uh, very interested in him in a couple of rounds. Okay. The other, just talk about quarterback conversation. Justin Herbert, we already have the stack with Mike Williams, we could lean into Patrick Mahomes and get that stack with potentially Juju or MVS a little bit later on. Cause you know, the only quarterback that goes ahead of, or the only piece that goes ahead of him is Travis Kelsey. This is something we always talk about on underdog where it's amazing that Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback five on the platform when it's so easy to stack him later on. So I don't know if we're forced into Justin Herbert here. Yeah, I mean, do we dare risk it and see if Herbert would fall to round five? I don't think it would happen in your redraft league, but I can see these sickos not drafting no, him. Like I, the I, only I team, think Jack especially would take Eckler. Him. I think Jack think would so? take him because he has Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. But we do know that he is a Lamar Jackson sicko. That is true. I, I say let's roll the dice. Let's find a wide receiver we like, and okay. let's see if we can get one of these studs. Because I'm fine with building a stack around Kyler Murray or J uh, Jalen Hurts, and worst case, we just go to Joe Burrow. Okay, here we are at wide receiver. There's DK Metcalf on the board, and he's kind of the last one left. Let's do it. Are you Throw sure? Last man time. I think so. Okay. All right. I don't think it, that there are any other. Oh, Gabe Davis is down there. Do we take we take Gabe over DK? Yes. Yes, we take Go Gabe. We take Gabe 100% over DK Metcalf. Oh, I love this. And and repeat that last sentence. Make make it very loud and clear. You take who over who? We take Gabriel Davis over DK Metcalf. I will eat this one if it does not come true. I know so many of you out there are so nervous about Gabriel Davis because he has less than 600 yards when you pull up his pro football reference page in each of his first two seasons in the league. But you have to consider that the Buffalo Bills did not view Gabriel Davis as a full-time player heading into last year because of how he finished his rookie season. But now they have made no move for someone like Emmanuel Sanders. They made no move for a veteran in his place. He's going to be out there in two wide receiver sets with a top three passing offense in the league. So pass production does not matter. It's a forward thinking program. And we just started a 14 team league with Leonard Fournette, Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, and Gabriel Davis. That's some dogs. We have some dogs. We have definitely some grown ass men. This is probably uh, through four rounds. We probably have the most weight on our team combined. Just going back to DK Metcalf. Are we sure that it's over for him? No. Like, are we, are we really like, because he's being drafted like wide receiver 25 wide right. receiver 28. 
uh, are the people fading them? Have they done the projections? Have they went into the Seahawks projections and looked to make sure that the math doesn't just, you know, line up for him to be like the, a wide receiver 16 this year? Well, if I noticed that Gabe Davis was on the board, we would have 100% taken DK Metcalf right, right there. He's and I keep drafting him, but everyone, he never gets brought up. It, it, immediately, it's like DK Metcalf, he has Geno Smith. And then it's just like conversation it. ended. Right. Can we get a little more nuance to this? Because uh, last time I checked, he's six foot four and runs a four, four, three, and he's had a thousand yards every single season. So, I mean, we had Matt Harmon on the program. Hopefully, you watched that episode out there. And he said it was a Neanderthal take to say that DK Metcalf only runs in a straight line. Like those people just have not been watching him the last few seasons i'm with matt Harmon that i think that his games just developed to a point where i'm not that concerned about like the the, the quarterback stuff i i think that he can win intermediate and i think that there's a chance that the seahawks are going to be trailing more than they're used to this season and that would obviously in the second half leave D dk metcalf out there looks like we are either going to get patrick mahomes or potentially clyde edwards elayer here if we want to. Well, I don't think we I don't think we have to go CEH. Is there any other wide receivers that we're intrigued with? Michael Thomas is the next one. There's Drake London. There's obviously DeAndre Hopkins. Do you want to check the underdog ADP and see if there's anyone who is uh mispriced here that we haven't gotten to yet? I I got I got the underdog ADP all memorized here. <laughs> uh, I know that it's Michael Thomas and Amon Ross St. Brown and, and Amari Cooper and Drake London. Yeah, it's like these it's like these top five and yeah. then DeAndre Hopkins as yeah. well. Um Oh, we're one pick away. I guarantee you AJ Dillon's about to take Patrick Mahomes. He has to. Unless he's yeah. so sharp. No, he took Michael Thomas. Wow, he goes Michael Thomas. Dude. Patrick Mahomes. Let's Hayden. do it. Let's do it. And Let's then we it. can stack him with MVS or Sky Moore a little bit later on. Yep. And I'm even open to it uh, with CH. Dude. For a 14 team league, I will reset and say we have Patrick Mahomes, Leonard Fournette, Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, and Gabriel Davis. Yeah. Let the and board the, fall, the other, baby. Let the board fall. The other thing in your redraft league, stacking is important. I encourage stacking in your redraft league. It matters less than it does in best ball, where you have to come in first place out of 450,000 people. In your, this league, we have to come in first place against two running backs, uh, eight fantasy analysts, and uh, two podcasters. You know, So I, I think that the stacking becomes less important as the amount of people you're competing against. Uh, dwindles down itself. Don't undersell this room. I guarantee you every single person here has a podcast, including AJ Dillon and Ty Tyler Algier. Do you think Tyler Algier and uh, Zach Wilson got along at BYU? It depends how old uh, the women Tyler Algier likes. <laughs> Maybe he's next up uh, uh, for Dax Milne. Maybe he's the next yeah. man up. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. If if he does take Dax uh, in the last round here, that's that's. Should I put in something. the chat? I'm gonna put this in the chat. Um, oh, I say fire it. This is good content. This is what the underdog fantasy subscribers are here for. Is for this. How should we word this? Is just it just be like team team Zach Wilson or team Dax Milne? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. Oh, now oh, you're in. Awkward. <laughs> do it, do it, do it, do okay. it. Hurry. Are you team Zach? <laughs> Or Team Dax. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please respond. Please respond. I'm putting it minus 300. This is left on red. <laughs> yes, the entire time. Not, not yes. a single one. Oh, not a single good. comment. Oh. Okay, just to fill the audio listeners in at home, Matt Kelly takes Elijah Moore. Brandon Ayuk to Ray GQ. He started three running backs. Najee Harris, Javante Williams, Zeke, and then has gotten Marquise Brown and Brendan Ayuk. And then a shocker, Matthew Betts with the only person with a team logo here with the Philadelphia Eagles takes Jalen Hurts. And then Scott Fish with Adam Thielen in round five, Dalton Schultz in round five to Ercolano and company, and Amari Cooper with Tyler Algier along with the turn. And we are still being left on red. He, he has been picking, so I'll give him a couple minutes here, but uh, we're now at, at minus 450 with, with left on red. This is like the range where you get some wonky default ADPs. Yep. So I think if you scroll down, there might be a couple names that are popping off the screen. Like Kadarius Tony, for example, Kirk. is way too low here. Christian Kirk's definitely a little bit low. Um, I think Kadarius Tony would be in play. I do wonder. It's like the debate is like, if you, you know Kadarius Tony's a good pick here, yep. but you, you also know there's a chance that he's, that he's 
an even better pick next round. So like this is the debate you have when you've been studying with best ball uh, and now you're in your, your redraft leagues. So Tyler Algier takes some players that just no one wants to draft and Dave Montgomery and Antonio Gibson as well. Um, I'm also intrigued. If AJ Dillon, how early he takes, I don't know, let's say Alan Lazard or he takes Romeo Dobbs or he wow. takes Robert Tunyon. I mean, we're about to get some inside information with a lot of these picks, I think. Yeah, I would. The thing that would just really mess with my brain would be like Christian Watson way earlier than yes. everyone else. And you're like, damn it. How, how much does read this? Randall Cobb in round 12. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Yeah, so we'll see. But I, I'm between definitely Drake London, DeAndre Hopkins. Or if he I takes Kirk Cousins ahead of Aaron Rodgers, that would be fun too. Woo. Spicy. Hey, he's thinking about maybe that week 17 correlation with himself. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, Ramondre just went off the board super early. He went ahead of a bunch of names like Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, like Miles Sanders, his own running mate, and Damien Harris. The train never stops for Mondre. That's for sure. Drake London off the board and Matthew Betts. That hurts. Yeah, we just can't draft CPAT because I want to see where Tyler Algier picks them. Like if it, we can't draft any Packers or any Falcons because I need to see who who they're skipping, who they're who they're drafting way ahead. I think I like Ch. Okay. Or DeAndre. Well, we because definitely- I, I I'm looking at these names right here and. I feel the best about CEH's outlook Me and too. we are we've already committed to Patrick Mahomes. We're not as concerned about like the week 17 spike week and how much the running back and the quarterback correlate in a single game. This is like season long correlation and obviously the running back and quarterback have season long correlation. So, I'm open to him as well here. I think I would go CEH, but then if if he's gone, I would go DeAndre. Oh, let's do it. I am look as much as you all might be nervous about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire's outlook, we just got him after Tony Pollard, after Damian Harris, after Mondre Stevenson, after Antonio Gibson, and after Josh Jacobs. There's no argument in that. Yeah, and uh, I went back and I found some more tape of Isaiah Pacheco, and it's what I thought about when I first saw it. Isaiah Pacheco is just a chaos rusher. You know, the footwork's bad. The vision's bad. He's a great athlete. I'm not surprised that he's been blowing up in training camp. I still believe that the Chiefs want him to be the RB2. But there's a reason he averaged 3.9 yards per carry at Rutgers. There's a reason he went to Rutgers. He averaged (laughs) 3.9 per carry. And then he went in the seventh round. You know, so I think Isaiah Pacheco being the number two in Kansas City, you know who the best news that it's for? It's for CEH. Yep. Like, to me, CH is the winner. If Isaiah Pacheco is the number two, that's a big win for first-round pick Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Yeah, we outlined this, too. In, I don't know, four of their opening five snaps, the Chiefs went 21 personnel with a fullback out there. They went 12 personnel with two tight ends out there. They, we know that they can spread it out. They've been spraying it out more than any other team in the league for the last five, six years. But if we get even, I don't know, 30% usage with some of those more heavy personnel packages with that offensive line that opens up so many canyons for the running back where CEH is actually probably at his best between the tackles. Even if he's not the fastest, even if he's not the most bruising back, he's almost like a bowling ball that just bounces off stuff. That's big. That's big. For you us. know, who he's kind of like stylistically is, and definitely with this offensive line is like, Ezekiel Elliott, where it's nothing super flash. I think Zeke's better, obviously, than CH is. But, like, there's nothing crazy. Like, a casual is going to be like, Zeke sucks. And I think that some of the film grinders kind of appreciate CH's ability to run between the tackles more than, like, the YouTube highlight watchers. There's also, if we're just trying to make the case for why CH is about to blow up this year after face planning last year, he got down to 165 pounds last year, you know, and also dealt with an ankle, a knee, an elbow, like all these things. If he's just healthy and rides it out in one of the best offenses in the league where they cut Ronald Jones and maybe because of being healthy heading into a season, they trust him in those inside the five yard line carries, like just getting those high value touches. Even a third of them changes his entire outlook because he hasn't gotten a third of them in the past. Okay. Some really nice picks I think have happened here. On the turn, Pete got Joe Burrow and Traylon Burks. We knew he was going to take the rookie. Just before A.J. Dillon goes Alan Lazard. We've had Zach Ertz off the board. So Hayden, we had Zach Ertz go ahead of Dallas Goddard, go ahead of Dawson Knox. So if you want to get one of our favorite tight ends here in Dawson Knox, I think we have to do it right now. 
I could be persuaded. Let's make sure there's not a wide receiver like Kadarius Tony still available, right? He is. I would go Kadarius over Dawson Knox. I have him like back to back in rankings. I, man, but you know how you much just... you know how much, especially here when we can't rely on the three tight end approach at the end of drafts, how it's going to fall yeah. off at the tight end position. Let's, I mean, you're not going to make me go against Dawson Knox. I'm, I'm definitely down for so it. So is it Dallas Goddard or Dawson, Dawson Knox that we go? I have, I have Dawson Knox ahead. Okay. We're going Dawson Knox. And we've already made a slight bet on the Bills offense with Gabe Davis. Like, this could be, like, the iteration where Steph Diggs misses a little bit of time, and all of a sudden, like, these guys are peppered with targets. Yeah. I think we have a best ball mindset at times because that's how we've been drafting and all of you should as well because it's gotten us really prepared as you can tell for this league because we are freaking smashing it where if you do miss out on that top tier of tight ends, that that middle tier of tight ends that really like again and Dawson Knox being the headliner of that group, then Hayden has come up with the approach this year of Dr. Frankenstein, David and Joku and Noah Fant and Hunter Henry. I don't want to do that in a season long league, man. I just want to rely on Dawson Knox and hopefully get some touchdowns. Got to, I got to say something. This is a classic Josh Norris thing. Uh-oh. He always Uh-oh. says draft good players on good teams. Go down the draft board and tell me the teams that these guys play for. We, Hey, we love top five offenses. Patrick Mahomes, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Leonard Fournette, Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, Gabriel Davis, Dawson Knox. How about just draft good players on good teams and good offenses? Some dogs. What if we get Kadarius Tony here? We can't. We could. We could. No. I mean, that would just be unbelievable. Maybe get a Michael Carter in there. Yeah. Get, get some Naeem Hines. Get some Kenneth Gainwell action for what we're doing. Yep. Yep. I agree. Alexander Madison types. Maybe we'll try to find one player with a little bit of bi week flex appeal and then one or a couple pure handcuff types. And in the meantime, let's let's get our flex figured out. This is going to be our flex for most of the season. Yep. We got to get this wide receiver correct. This is one of our most important picks. Yep. Well, Algier at the turn just went Fryermuth and MBS, and then Kadarius Tony just went. So this flex gets a little more spicy and uncertain as we go along. Can we get a chat update? Let's see if Tyler Algier has responded. No dice. Damn it. <laughs> I mean, it's the question of the year. Are you team Zach or are you team Dax? I even tagged him. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Oh, That's I, funny, though. He's, he's drafting on his phone, 100%. He's in a team meeting in the back row drafting on his phone right now. That would not be good for his fantasy stocks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, flex spot. Well, we're on the clock. Isaiah Pacheco just went right before us. Sky Moore just went right before us. There's Chase Claypool. Let's do Russell Gage. Let's do it. I'm with it, man. Let's do it. For where we are and early season value for our flex, and then we figure it out with maybe some rookies as we go along. Yep. I really like Russell Gage in this spot. Julio Jones on the return and just get one of those two bucks receivers or no? I'm just throwing oh, out potential man. options yeah, here I, it, so because people are no. going to be thinking the same thing. No, I, I, it's, not, it's not the worst. I... Yeah, I think we should keep that in the back of our, our head here. Okay. To me, like the name in this territory, like every single time I look for it is Melvin Gordon. And in this league, th- everyone in this draft is is sorting by age, and they they don't True. even have Melvin Gordon in their top two fifty. I think we've played it played it well so far. We you know, a little drop off to Tony or MVS there at the the eight eight selection would have been fantastic. Yeah, I, but. I wasn't expecting uh, Tyler Algier to snipe us with MVS, but <laughs> this is the simulation that uh, we're in. Do we think Algier has a single stack by the end of this? Yes or no? I think by the just <laughs> pure odds of it, I think yes. What if AJ Dillon got out here and was just drafting purely for week 17 correlation the entire time? That would be great. Oh, I mean, we can go Julio here. Julio, is there? Hit me with those running backs again. It's Michael Carter. It's Isaiah Spiller. It's Kenneth Gainwell. Brian Robinson. Okay, and the wide receivers we have Julio Jones. We have Julio. We have Rondale. Oh, we have Jahan are, Dotson. No we have DJ now. Chark. We have Devonte Parker. Let, let's go, Julio. Let's go, Julio. Okay, we'll figure it out. It's our flex. We just need one of them. We need one of them. Let's go. 
Wear an 85, Julio Jones. Why not, man? If Tyler Algier does not take himself in this round, something's up. I'm moving him down the rankings if he doesn't hit him on the turn here. <laughs> he drafts himself. Tyler Algier go. drafts himself. And Christian Watson. You know he worked out with Christian Watson ahead. Yes, of course. Let's let's look back at wide receivers. Let's get let's get nice and comfy with the wide receiver spot. Well, good luck with this group. DJ Chark, potentially Jalen Tolbert in this area. Tolbert's going later here than he does an underdog. Would we? I'm, not, I'm not in on Tolbert. Okay. I, yeah, I, I would rather do Devontae Parker or DJ Chark. I would rather go Parker because I think he has a legitimate chance to be the wide receiver one. DJ Chark doesn't. I guess he does, but I think Devontae Parker has a better chance to do it. There's also KJ Osborne. Man, the player that is. Super low here is Joshua Palmer. 211. Is that what it says? 211. Wow. Is this a, something where we'd go Michael Gallup and we have our Bucks wide receivers while Chris Godwin's missing time? And then by the time Chris Godwin comes oh. back, now Michael Gallup is in the lineup and Michael Gallup in, in uh, redraft when you're already drafting him on your bench. It doesn't really matter that he's not playing. If you weren't starting Michael Gallup already and he's just sitting on your bench, does it really matter that he's oh. playing versus not playing? I like that. And we can put him on IR, hopefully, and then pick up someone on a, our, yeah. our waivers, like a backup running back right now. We're, we're taking Michael Gallup. We are taking Michael Gallup if he's there. Matt Kelly, don't do it to us. I will never go on your show ever again if you take Michael Gallup here. Perfect. Alberto. Michael Gallup. Should we just Let's look around to make sure? I mean, we're not taking Matthew Stafford. At running back, it's James Robinson at the top of the board. Tight end. Hell no, it's Mike Kosicki. Let's go, Gallup Michael Gallup. Let's go. Let's go. But between those three, just give me health throughout the, the year. Someone and I feel is going to hit. With one of them. One of them. Someone is going to hit. If Brian Robinson is, though, he just went, dang it, with Khalil Herbert. Oh, we are towing this line at the running back spot. I get so uncomfortable when this happens. <laughs> yeah, this talk isn't even a zero it. RB. This is not even a zero RB team, and you are sweating no, talk, over there. Talk me through it, man. Even all the zero running back drafters out there have four on their roster, five on their roster, and we've got two. Well, let's pull up the running back list. Let's find some names for the people. James Robinson. No. Jamal Williams. Yes, Jamal. Okay. Well, There's going to be some more. Let's keep scrolling. There's going to be some more. Down Zemir White. Me. Yes, Zemir White. Eno Benjamin. We're a lock to take Chris Evans in a couple rounds. And Trey Sermon in a couple rounds. Perfect. See, we're building our super team. Okay, that's it. That's the list. I mean, there, there's definitely some names deeper into this. We no, there's not. I, I'm, I'm just checking. I'm checking right now. There's no, there are no other names in this list. They're all been Keyshawn taken. Vaughn. What oh, happened? Yeah, yeah. What happened to this industry draft where they all just want to take running backs now? Man, what happened? Zig, when other people are zagging, you know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I think we go Jamal Williams. Let's do it. Hey, the good news about best ball is, hey, we didn't take okay. Jamal Williams. We didn't take Josh Palmer here, but guess what? In in an hour, we can go to the lobby and go draft some Josh Palmer. Yeah, speaking the next up, round. I'm in about 17 underdog drafts right now. If you have a draft this summer, end of August, early September, and need to prepare, don't do silly mock drafts. Don't do silly mock drafts. Go and draft on Underdog Fantasy. It is like truly the best way to build a super team like we are. All you have to do is take good players from good offenses. That's it. That's how you win. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple game. I mean, for real. Let's reset, though. Patrick Mahomes, Leonard Fournette, Clyde edwards Lair, Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, Gabriel Davis, Dawson Knox, and then for the flex, some combination of Russell Gage, Julio Jones, and Michael Gallup with Jamal Williams as our third running back. I'm feeling much better with that Jamal Williams pick now. I see a bunch of dogs on this team. I mean. I don't know to tell you. Zamir White would be another absolute dog of a pick. So at running back, Zamir White is 100% the play. And after that, it's like a gigantic drop-off. I mean, just gigantic drop-off. <laughs> he needs Samir White in a big way. Can we trade up? <laughs> Can we trade a, a, a future 16th? Ray, Ray is 100% going to take Samir White. Yeah, He's, he... He has loaded up with rookies and Sky Moore and Isaiah Spiller and Ty Davis-Price. Just take him, Ray. Break my heart. Take Samir White. And Ray is a film watcher. The, and Punch Zemir me in White the face. can play. 
Punch me in the face, Ray. Go ahead and do it. Watch it be like Jameson Crowder. <laughs> Watch it be Raheem Mostert. No! No! Podfather. All right, let's pivot. Let's pivot. We got to find somebody. Well, there are is no like David and Joku. David and Joku is he available? I, I I would not want to take a, a second tight end yet. He's available. Hunter Henry's available. I don't think it's worth it to take a second tight end. I mean, I maybe think we can it justify is. it. I think we can justify it. Would you take in Joku over Hunter Henry? Would you take Noah Fant? Would you take Tyler Higby? Oh, I'm crushed with that Samir. White Do they have selection. different bye weeks? David and Joku and. David Joko is by week nine. Dawson Knox is seven. No. I feel good about Ninjoku. Where's his bye week? Uh he's yeah, he's uh, seven. He's seven. I feel good about Ninjoku. If there's an if there's a name that you feel passionate about, let go for it. I think David Njoku is a totally fine pick. Over Alec Pierce. Yes. I just don't see a, a reality where Alec Pierce is like a fantasy starter. All right. And I can see David Njoku be like being the tight end ten. All right. Do you know we could also look into? Ty Montgomery. You're like, Josh, you're a crazy person. Just sell me on it. Why? <laughs> we could look into Ty Montgomery. So even the Patriots team site is talking about how much Ty Montgomery is going to have a role in this offense. Like he, he is going to play a factor in it. I'm not saying next round. I'm just saying no one else is going to take Ty Montgomery in this class. On this player list, he has an ADP of 605. Final round pick Ty Montgomery might be something to think about. Are we fools if we take Ronald Jones here in round 13? The the only the only way is we galaxy brain this and that Ronald Jones gets cut and he gets he signs for the Rams. This is uh this is tough times. Deontay, when we're getting true running back handcuffs now. We're getting true running back insurance in round 13 of a redraft league. Um, do we go, okay, there's a few options. Do we go Trey Sermon? Do we go Zay Jones? Do we go Alec Pierce? Those are, I think, are our three options here with this pick. I think we need bullets at running back, Me too. personally. So we go Trey Sermon, Hayden. Okay. Okay, Hayden. I would go Chris Evans over Trey Sermon. No. I have Chris Evans as top 150. Why, why are we against Chris Evans now? Because I, I, he's not, he doesn't have like the, uh, Ronald Jones just went right before us. He doesn't have the, the backup gig locked up. Oh, I saw some clips of him in the preseason. I, know. And I was convinced. Okay, let's go Chris Evans for the brand. Yeah, I think it's a great brand play. Why am I trying to be down on Chris Evans? Why do you talk me out? I of don't this? know what happened. No. I don't know. I didn't talk you out of this. Okay, snap back to it, Josh. Get over that Zamir White selection. Let's make the case for Chris Evans here because this is a team that was built on explosive plays last season. They just trotted out Samaj P. Ryan, who's like the player version of Zach Taylor, who, oh, I don't want to do anything spicy or exaggerated or fun. I just want to be a good pass protector that can be sensible. Um, okay, if teams are now going to play more too high shells, there's going to be some running lanes or there's going to be some explosive plays out of the running back position with one fewer man in the box. Give me Chris Evans getting, I don't know, 25% of the touches at the very least. And let's roll because that man has some juice to his game. To me, it's Joe Mixon misses time, and it's Chris Evans or Samaje Piran, and Explosive give me the guy that give me the guy runs that runs faster. Right. Imagine <laughs> the case would be easier. if Samaje Piran didn't have like a sixty-yard touchdown in the Super Bowl or whatever it was, or in the NFC AFC Championship. Um, but so Chris Evans had a seventy-yarder called back when he broke out to the edge, and also had a forty-yard kick return. You know what's great about the the spread the spreadsheet bros is I saw um, I forget which side it was but they were recapping the preseason week one performance and they're like Chris Evans does nothing with his touches like I, uh, oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. it's because I, I saw at the box store and yeah. and didn't actually watch you saw the game six for twenty and you felt no reason to bring up a seventy yard long run when he got to the edge and outran the closing safeties and destroy their angles. You didn't bring up the 40 yard kick return. None of it. None of it. <laughs> like we are in round 13 and we're seeing Sony Michelle, Chuba Hubbard and Tyler Beatty being drafted. Um, I feel fine with Trey Sermon if you want to make that pick, but I would feel even better. Oh, if Zay, yeah. Zay Jones is our selection with the next one. I really like Zay Jones. Yeah. I like Trey Sermon better, but I can be sold on Zay Jones. Uh, 
for sure. You know what uh, this stream's teaching me? The tw the the sixty second clock. It's, it's too much. Oh, it's, it's way too much. The underdog thirty second clock. Right. I mean, my gosh, what a what a win! That's What's our roster construction look like? How many wide receivers do we have? A lot and all that. Okay, so we have our full starting lineup. Everyone knows it because it's full of dogs. At the flex, it's either Russell Gage, Julio Jones, Michael Gallup. Then at backup running back after Leonard Fournette and Clyde Zulaire, we have Jamal Williams and Chris Evans. I think we should skip over Zay Jones for running backs. If CH or Leonard Fournette misses any time this yeah. season, we are going to be scrambling. You yeah. know, like so Trace I think we can pick up a, a Zay Jones, like whoever's the wide receiver three for the Texans, we can just pick up that wide receiver. Yeah. What if Trey Sermon has just broken out of the doghouse, escaped from the nether realm? And has earned that second running back spot. We we firmly believe it's Elijah Mitchell and everyone else in that backfield. But they are going to run. They are going to run. And Trey Sermon is going to have their opportunities because backs in the 49ers backfield get hurt. Including Elijah Mitchell. He's battling a hamstring injury. I love Elijah Mitchell and I've been a big stand of his. But he's got a little hammy issue. So yeah, Trey Sermon has been with the twos kind of. We didn't get Jeff Wilson appearance for personal reasons, so very, very up in the air for that RB2 spot. Yep. First defense goes off the board, Derek Carr, so we get Trey Sermon. Let's go. <laughs> Let's it. go. Over, over so Zay good. Jones. Okay, Trey Sermon it is. There goes Ty Montgomery. Look at that from J.J. Zacharyson. You laughed at me, and then J.J. takes him. Okay. I don't think we have to... I don't think we have to take a kicker or a defense. And I refuse. Don't even pull up the, oh, this, it just, well, there's Harrison me. Butker is stacking work with quarterback and kicker. I, I have no kicker takes. I have no defense takes. What, I have what do the no sheets say about that? Some great defenses out there. Jerk McKinnon just went. That was an interesting running back selection. And Dearness Johnson. Okay. Nothing so, from Tyler Algier in the, in, in the chat. No, that's why I just wanted to check. And, uh, he refuses to answer. I think we take Zay Jones. I'm good with it. Because it's Jamison Crowder. It's Donovan Peoples-Jones. Now, the issue Marvin with this is you're leaving me up to taking kickers and defense. And I'm going to have to get the bottom of the barrel here every single week. When we could just take, I don't know, the Tampa Bay Bucks defense right now. No. <laughs> But this is this is this goes against best practices. What you never draft a, a, a kicker or a defense this early. You take more running backs because there's a chance. So I have to that take a, a running back, back here? that you draft. No, or wide receiver. But like if if Christian Kirk pops his Achilles or something like that, Zay Jones goes up five rounds. Give me give me a, an outcome where your fifth fifteenth round tight or uh, defense goes up five rounds. Okay, well we're taking Zay Jones. Perfect. Zay Jones looks good. Doug Peterson is out there saying that his connection with Trevor Lawrence is really something. He's not smart. He's not exactly competing with Christian Kirk, who will be in the slot as a vertical player. Zay Jones as the best outside wide receiver in the Jacksonville Jaguars. The wallet suggests it. The contract suggests it. Let's do it. Thanks. Okay. So if we close this out with a running back, is it Matt Breida for the Giants? Is it Dontrell Hilliard with the Titans, even though Hassan Haskins already went? Is it Keeps Rex Burkhead oh, <laughs> with no. the Texans? Is it Keyshawn Vaughn? We already have Lenny, I so I wouldn't pick. I wouldn't pick Vaughn if Lenny. If Lenny's out, our team's just beyond toast. Do you know who it could be? It could be Mike Davis. I mean, what if J.K. Dobbins is not ready for Week One? We know that Gus Edwards yeah. is not ready for Week One. People are going to see our team and they're going to get the memes going of Trey Sermon, Mike Davis from our takes and, from last and year and, and just take us to town. So I, I would vote against not that. I, I can be sold in Boston Scott, maybe. Is Benny Snell available? <laughs> Benny Snell is available. <laughs> Him. Why not? What? Why not Benny Snell? Darrington Evans is available too. Joshua if Kelly. Not, if, if Najee, yes, Joshua Kelly. There it is. Or Benny Snell, either one. Or, We're talking about current RB2s. Whoa, 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 whoa. Travis Homer without Ken Walker? Yeah, but even then, it's just like... Just passing. 
Yeah. Austin Eckler and Najee Harris tears their ACL in training camp. Josh Josh Kelly and Benny Snell are they're moving up the boards pretty significantly. Let's just check where Snell is. Yes, I mean Snell's still still out there. He's a uh, oh, five eighty seven yeah. in their rankings. Oh yeah. Okay, we'll cue those up. This is the, the everyone check. says that Benny Snell's so bad. He is. He's um, Benny Snell. Sure. Is is Anthony McFarland so good? Is it, who? who who are we concerned with on the Steelers? Who's the best running back free agent? That's a that's a good question. Ronald Jones. Um, yeah, it would be Ronald Jones. I could, if you close your eyes, can't you see Ronald Jones in a Pittsburgh Steelers uniform? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Our last pick is coming up. Are we are we team Joshua Kelly or are we team Benny Snell? I'm I I think I'm team Benny Snell. You're team Joshua Kelly. I mean, I like both. I, I I keep drafting him. Benny Snell. He didn't go to UCLA. And you've read reports that Benny Snell is the the second back on that team. And he's lost weight. Me too. Benny Snell it is. He was pushing cars all off season. Okay. Let's uh let's review our team, Hayden. At quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, two running backs, Leonard Fournette. Clyde Edwards Lair, wide receivers of Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, and Gabriel Davis. Of just those six names, there is an outside chance that we really don't have to shift that for weeks and weeks and weeks. We can hope. <laughs> I mean, those are all great offenses. Oh, yeah. And five out of six of those are certified good players. <laughs> then we have Dawson Knox. And then at the flex spot we are really mashing things together with early season some combination of probably russell gage to start week one but if we see julio jones out there and let's say two wide receiver sets and julio jones getting the intermediate and Mm -hmm. downfield targets then boom we just flip those two as we wait for michael gallup to return to add some competition to that lineup and then at backup running back our third running back it's jamal williams to go along with chris evans trey sermon and Benny Snell, and we wrap it all up with uh, David and Joku as our tight end too, just hoping for Jimmy Garoppolo to be at quarterback, and Zay Jones, the perm. How are we feeling, Hayden? I think I'm feeling pretty good. I'm very glad that I don't have to be doing uh, waivers and roster management like you'll have to do in this, and that's why I'm going to be sticking to the uh, the best ball format. If you have not tried best ball yet, there is still plenty of time to do it. As you can see, it prepares you to draft the best team among industry leaders. Go and do it. The best place to do that is Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code the show. Go and win $2 million. First place in Best Ball Man 2. And by the way, if you get the best team in the regular season, we're just going to hand you a million dollars up front. Can't wait for the rest of the preseason. Great content ahead from us. Hopefully you enjoyed this inside look at our brains and trying to wrap our head around this draft. We appreciate it. Hayden, thanks for joining me with it and talking me out of some awful selections. Up the villa, everyone. We will talk to you all soon. See ya.